It's day 80 in a year of living the warrior's way. And today I want to talk about something that gets on people's goat and something that upsets people, but people are not quite seeing the bigger picture. So when Garrett originally started Warrior, he was talking about connecting with the voice, the voice inside, you know, your connection with your spiritual power, your God, whatever the case may be. And people, you know, didn't mind that. They got on with it and they they accepted it and they thought it was quite interesting to have this non-religious thing. And Garrett, when he started Warrior, had rejected his Mormon upbringing and became pretty much ambivalent to organised religion and was on his own spiritual journey, which I applaud because people have to do that. They have to find their own way. And then... What happened was, Garrett, because he is Garrett, and that's his choice and his idea and his way, decided suddenly what seemed and appeared to be very suddenly to be converted back into a religious way. And he drove a lot of people away because in some of the shares and things like that, suddenly we were saying prayers. And some people didn't want to get involved with that. And then there was other, you know, singing and kumbaya my lord shit going on and all this praise praise be and and if you like that great i mm, wouldn't say i like it but i don't dislike it i'm just a bit ambivalent towards it but that drove a few people away but what is my point with this apart from saying that it drove people away and some people like it and some people don't well the point is that the past and people who have lived in the past have lived lives and died and given scripture and knowledge that has been passed down through the ages. So if you look at Seneca, for example, (laughs) Seneca the Younger and Seneca the Great and various other Senecas, this, this Greek philosopher from thousands of years ago, I think he was Greek, might have been Roman, I, it doesn't matter whatever he was, he, he died a long time ago. But he gave a huge amount of deep inside knowledge to the world, which he expressed through his letters to other people that he was trying to influence and help and guide and mentor. Then you have other people, you know, going back, Socrates, you know, even in recent times, you could say Steve Jobs had an awful lot to say and an awful lot of influence on people. You know, you look at various other people over the years who have brought huge amounts of influence to the world and different things. But that's just those people. So let's take a look at some of the things that Garrett is talking about at the moment as I negotiate a date. I think Garrett talks about Abraham, where he says, leave your country, leave your family, leave your house. And then he explains how that piece of scripture matters these days. Because in order to change and in order to become different versions of ourselves, we have to leave the old versions behind. Now, we're talking in metaphors here. Leave your country could be leave your job. Leave your country could be leave your wife. Leave your country could be literally getting up and leaving your country. Because Abraham says, when you leave your country, I will gift you and give you, as long as you take that leap, you will become and get what you deserve. But in order to get these things, we have to relinquish the things and the comfort and the situation that we live in. Because our brain, our survival brain, is built on some prehistoric horseshit that still permeates to this day, which is go to the safest place. Don't go where the saber-toothed tigers are. Fuck that shit, they'll rip you apart. Go to where the safety is. But safety doesn't serve us. Safety keeps us chained. It keeps us in a prison of our own choice because we're not leaving our country to go to where the real harvest is, where the real water is, where the real fruit is. 
you know, we're, we're not changing fundamentally as ourselves because our survival brain, with all the shame and guilt and blame and, you know, all, all of the stuff that's fed to us by the media and all of these things, you know, we, we, we get stuck and we become imprisoned with our own brain, our own minds, and our own beliefs in what should be in the status quo and what people tell us we are allowed to have and we're entitled to have and what we should expect. And, you know, it's a, it's a weird one because it means that there is no purpose or mission in life that we're chasing. And this brings me, I've mentioned it before in, previous, in Japan, in, particularly in Okinawa, they have this saying, that um, ikigagi, I think it is, which is basically that, that they don't have a, a word for retirement because there is no word. So they have this phrase, ikigagi, which is, you know, the, the purpose of my life. And these people live into their hundreds because they have a purpose in their life. They have something that they're striving for. They want to go to their great, great, great granddaughter's wedding, you know, when they will be 123. But they have that in their mind. So they still work every day. They push every day. They exercise every day. They do whatever it takes to be done that day. They're not thinking about just chilling out and sitting back and letting the government pay for them or their children look after them or any of these things. And yes, you could argue and you can say, but they eat well and they've got this amazing diet and they haven't got processed shit and they haven't got alcohol and they haven't got all of these things. Yes, of course, yes. I get all of that, but it's still a choice. They make a choice to not be tempted. They make a choice to have a purpose. And in order to have that purpose, you've got to leave your country, you've got to leave your house to be striving to go towards a new house. That new house needs to be something that you create and you decide on in your mind and you make moves towards getting. And this weekend, I'm going to be doing just that, sitting down and creating a new path, a new structure, a new purpose, and moving towards that with a relentless intensity to get there. Because me just saying I want 100 grand a year isn't going to produce it. It's not going to magically just appear in my lap. I have to do things. I have to take action. I have to know exactly what I want to do. I've got to burn those bridges. I've got to burn those boats, and I've got to say, this is what I'm going for. Not get distracted. Pick one particular mission, because at the moment I'm chasing five or six rabbits, and I'm not catching any of them. And those rabbits look tasty. Oh, those rabbits. When you cook them, and then you use the fur, and they're so soft, and you can have fun with them. But if you're chasing five fucking rabbits and catching none, pretty soon you're going to run out of energy and you're going to run out of desire, and you're going to run out of drive, and you're going to run out of purpose, and you're going to run out of determination, because you're catching fuck all, because you're chasing in all sorts of different directions. Persistent hunt, you pick one prey, you chase after that singular prey, and you hunt that motherfucker down until you've caught it, because that prey cannot sweat. And this is what happens in life. It's a beautiful metaphor. Pick the one animal, chase it down, ruthless intensity, keep going, day in, day out, no rest till you've actually caught what you're after. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.